Good morning, everybody. Here we are again. Wow, the sun is shining and we are really excited because today we are going to reintroduce Daniel's Den Praise. Now, Daniel's Den Praise used to happen every Friday and my friend Joan and I used to run this together. And it was just like the ordinary Daniel's Den with our welcome and our toys and our ride-ons and all that sort of thing. But the difference was we would have um, a Bible story and we would also have a craft related to the story. And then we would sing some lovely songs. We'd sing some of our usual songs, but we'd also sing um, songs about God and um, everybody absolutely loved it. But then we got busy and life happened and I wasn't very well. So it's just, and it didn't really start again. But you know what? This situation at the moment, lots of us are stuck in our houses. You know, it's creating new opportunities. And Funny Bonnie is, oh, he's just so excited that he can see you every day. Now, Daniel then prays, we always had a song that we would start with. And we're going to sing that one to start with now. And it's called, Thank you, God, for Daniel's Den. So I wonder if you can join in. We're going to be doing this every Friday. So the words are quite simple, and I'm going to sing it now. It goes, thank you, God, for Daniel's Den. Thank you, God, for Daniel's Den. Thank you, God, for Daniel's Den. Right where we are. Thank you, God, for all our friends. Thank you, God, for all our friends. Thank you, God, for all our friends. Right where we are. Yeah, well done, everybody. Now, I know I can see people are watching in Tunbridge Wells. Hello, Claire. I can see someone's watching in Birmingham. Hello, Carrie. I don't know where you are today, but you are very welcome to Daniel's Den Praise. And, you know, Daniel's Den has lots and lots of friends all around the world. And in Wolverhampton, my gosh, um, there is a lovely, lovely, lovely lady called Muriel, Muriel Perkins. And she has been a friend of Daniel's Den for many, many years. And Muriel... Hello Muriel, I don't know whether you're watching. She loves knitting and look what she sent to me a few years ago. You know yesterday I was talking about boxes and how Funny Bunny and I love boxes. Well here is a box. Can you see it? It came in the post to my address. What do you think is inside there? This is going to be our story today so let's have a little look look at this it's so exciting getting parcels and funny body just loves what's in this box can you see can you see right let's see what the first thing is oh my gosh it is <gasps> who is that look my gosh they've got a cloak and they've got a crown who do you think that is funny bunny with that crown Oh, he thinks it's somebody royal. He thinks it could be the king of Babylon. Oh my gosh, we better put him somewhere important. Let's put him there. Or oh, I'll put him beside my cup of tea. What else have we got in there? Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 oh. very holy. Gosh, we need some angels, don't we? But this is an angel, so we've got a king and an angel. Oh my gosh. We've got somebody who's looking very important, who thinks they know what's best. Oh my word. There's quite a few people like that around, isn't there? But they're in this story. And, oh, this is someone who's looking rather serious. I'm sure he doesn't look like that all the time. Can you see, look, he's got like a special cloak that goes over his head, maybe if he's getting a bit cold. Um, but he, he looks like he's been self-isolating. But anyhow, this man is actually called Daniel. And he's looking a bit serious because he's just survived the story. So this is Daniel. 
And actually, this story from the Bible um, is how Daniel's den got its name. So this is Daniel. And the last character in this box, my gosh. <laughs> Don't be scared of me, guys. This is a lion. Can you see his name? And his feet and his amazing tail. And he's the lion. So we're going to tell our Bible story now. And I've got this wonderful Bible here. Now, this belonged to my children. And I think every child should have um, special books. And I think having a Bible is a really great thing because you can dip in and out of it for stories. And this is a really good one with lots of lovely, lovely pictures. And this is what we're going to do our story about now. Now, I know this story, so I don't need to read it. And I've heard there's some sort of rules about reading books online about copyright. So just to be sure, we're not doing it at the moment. So we've had to take some of our pictures down, but you never know, we might be able to change that. Anyhow, long, long ago, there was this man called Daniel. Now, Daniel loved God and God loved Daniel. And Daniel would always want to um, do what was right. And every day he would pray to God and God would give him wisdom. And the king of Babylon thought Daniel was a fantastic man. He'd tap him on the shoulders and he'd give him a thumbs up. Can you give a thumbs up? Daniel was a good man. And I see those thumbs. Well done, everybody. Now, sadly, not everybody liked this. And there were some very self-important people who thought they knew better. And they didn't like the fact that every day Daniel prayed to his God. So do you know what they did? Behind Daniel's back, they went to see the king. And they whispered in his ear and they said, you know what? I don't think you should have people praying to God. Everybody should be bowing down to you. And the king went, oh, that sounds reasonable. And they said, and if anybody is praying to, to anyone other than you, to God, then I think you should throw them in a den of lions. And the king, maybe he was a bit distracted, but he went, you know what? That's probably an okay rule. So these pompous, the pompous man made this rule. But what do you think Daniel did? What do you think he did? You are absolutely right, funny bunny, as ever. Daniel was a God-fearing man and he still kept praying. Every morning and night he would pray to God and ask him for wisdom and God gave him wisdom. So this rude man found out. And do you know what he did? He got some guards and they got hold of Daniel and they went and put him in a den of lions. Whew, just like that. No wonder Daniel was looking a bit worried because there wasn't just one lion. There was one. There was two. And there was three. And they hadn't had any breakfast. What have you had for your breakfast today? I know that I had brown flakes a long, long time ago. But these lions hadn't had anything to eat and they kept going. Rah, rah. Can you do that? Oh my gosh, I'm getting a sore throat. Funny bunny, can you do that? So these were very fierce, hungry, scary lions. I'm mean, wonder if you can find some lions and post it later. So poor Daniel was thrown into the den of lions like this. And it was very scary. Prayer got him in there and um, he had to pray to God. Dear God, please keep me safe in this den of lions. And guess what God did? Do you remember that other character that we had? Yes, God sent an angel. And the angel came and sat down between the lions and Daniel. And the angel closed the lion's mouth and they fell asleep. And Daniel wasn't hurt at all. So the angel came as a response to God's prayer and to protect Daniel and the lions went down to sleep and um, yeah and, and 
Daniel, he slept down as well. And the angel went away. Meanwhile, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what happened? The king thought, what have I done? What have I done? I've killed my best man, the God-fearing Daniel. But you know what? The next morning he got out of bed early and he ran along, he ran along and he saw and he went, Daniel, Daniel. Daniel said, don't worry, king, I'm safe. The, um, God has closed the lion's mouth. He sent an angel to rescue me. And the king was so happy. And he and Daniel were friends for so long. And in fact, Daniel had a really important position in the government because of that. And all because he prayed to his God and he wouldn't be bullied by people who were jealous of him. So that's the end of our story. And, you know, many people ask me, why on earth is Daniel then called Daniel? So they think that my son is called Daniel. Well, he's not. He's called Josh. Um, but, you know, that story can teach us an awful lot of things. Daniel was a man of prayer. And because he prayed, he ended up in that den of lions. And what noise did the lions make? <laughs> that's right. And it was scary. And pray got him in and pray got him out. And do you know, lots of times, you'll be really surprised, parents sometimes pray to God that God will bless them with a child. And then when children are born, guess what? My gosh, it's scary. It's exhausting. It's so tiring. It's so wonderful, but it's such a mixture of emotions when you have a baby. And, um, and prayer is so important um, to help you survive. In your parenting life and I know lots of people at the moment are praying for God to keep us all safe during this um, challenging time and that's what we're praying for too that God will keep us all safe and then um, we're going to sing a couple of songs now and one of these songs is my well, well ooh, my God is so big I keep forgetting you know my brain is all over the place now funny bunny doesn't know this song he hasn't sung it before so he would love you to help him with it. So it goes, my God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. Clap, clap. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. Are you ready? The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. Bing, bing. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you and you and you. Well done, everybody, for singing. Did you stretch out really wide? Can you stretch out really wide? Well done. Can you make big muscles and be mighty by holding your brow? That is fantastic. That song, we just love it. And there's lots of wonderful songs online. I know a lot of you love the statue song. Google that on YouTube and you can play it at home and run around the room. And um, we just love that song. Anyhow, our last song today is a song that your mummy and daddy will know. In fact, the whole world knows this song. And we sing it every once in a while at Daniel's Den, and it's so old. But we're going to sing it now as our last song. And I think it's really important at the moment because the whole world needs to know the love of God. And it's called He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. So we've got to make a big circle with our arms. Can you do that? At the world. Can you do that? Get your arms, stretch it really high and make a big circle. Remember the tubes that we were looking through yesterday? I don't know that you've made any circles. I saw a fantastic card that Maisie had made with her cardboard tube. Well done, Maisie. But we're going to sing our last song, which is He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. Are we ready? He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands he's got the whole world. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands. 
Yeah, fantastic singing. There's so many verses for that. You can make them up as you go along. It's absolutely great. So that's our, the end of Daniel's then prayers today. And we just pray God's peace and his blessing on all of you and all your families. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Bye.